So, so, so. First of all, thank you for taking the you're time. You're welcome. You're welcome. And I know that you're a busy guy. So. It's all right. Busy guy. People have time. You know that. So. <laughs> well, there's so many questions I want to ask you. I'm, I'm so curious about so many things. Um, I Me too. I'm still seeking the answers. So it's all right. We're in good. <laughs> <laughs> we think we know. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a heads up. And I, I feel like um, I'm going to ask you questions that I feel you, I don't know if you get asked often because um, when I read what you write, it's generally in the form of press releases. Correct. And those are. Although I've written three books, so. So it goes beyond the press release. What I meant is that yeah, I know, I know things that are written, you know, in advance, and right. uh, that you have time to respond to, and where you kind of are, are more in control of, of the pace of responding to them. So not anymore. This doesn't the world has changed. Right. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just giving you a heads up. Okay. But I feel like you. This is your job. Fine. So you're you're well well equipped to to handle. So we'll see. So let's start off with um, Rupert Murdoch, mm -hmm. and he just won this International Leadership Award from mm -hmm. the ADL. And I was just kind of curious, I noticed um, in today's Israeli newspaper, it noted that Rupert Murdoch is uh, a contributor of Benjamin Netanyahu's um, campaign. Oh, he is? Okay. Yeah, That's apparently <laughs> so. Yeah, good for um, him. <laughs> Is he, has he been in the past, or is he currently like a financial contributor to the ADL at all? No. No. Um, Although, you know, to be precise, um, we may have honored somebody that he, in order to express his business affiliation or otherwise, may have, you know, taken a table at a dinner, so. But if, is he a constant, significant supporter of the League? No. Um, so I was I was pretty surprised by that award because um, like from a lot of people's perspectives, it would seem that uh, Fox News and all of you know New York Post, all of the news organizations that he owns, um, that they you know come into a lot of controversy. Um, in fact, uh, there, you know a lot of lawsuits by former employees suing them for you know har harassing uh, workplace environment, people claiming that they promote bigotry. So, so what's the point? Well, I was just wondering, like, how, how do you respond to criticism of Rupert Murdoch as a person? Is he deserving of uh, an award like that? We, we decided to give it. We didn't give it to him for his, uh, I don't know about his labor practices. Uh, I guess if you would um, examine issues of labor practice, you'd probably honor nobody. Because at one point or another, there are people, there are labor disputes, etc. Um, we honored him because of his public positions. Um, on Israel, on the Jewish people, and on anti-Semitism. I happen to, if you, uh, if you read the speech, if you want my speech, uh, we also, uh, I made specific reference to his um, leadership and immigration issue, which is a very serious issue. And uh, we've, that, you know, you select what, the people, you select the issues, and you embrace them. Uh, we honor President Bush one. Uh, a lot of people were upset, you know, he wasn't the best friend of Israel, but we honored him because he was very significant in saving Jews. So, you know, you, you don't go into the minutest details. Um, he's entitled to support any political candidate he wants here or elsewhere. It, it's, it's still a democracy, and uh, we don't take political uh, litmus tests. Um, I find it interesting. I, you're not the first one who's raised the issue. Do you know that he was honored by the American Jewish Committee last Last year, do you know that he was honored by the Jewish Federation of New York the year before? And I wasn't aware that anybody ever asked the question. But okay. <laughs> well, you're, you're hearing from me. I would ask the same thing of them because I know. Well, I don't. I doubt it. <laughs> I don't know because um, it, it, the times have changed. You know, everything now becomes an issue. Uh -huh. Everything becomes. Um, 
people I see. Uh, my sense is for a lot of people is that if you on the PLE called President Obama a racist, you know, like I find it on his show. But, you know, you um, don't have to go delve too much into that. You work for Haaretz, okay? Um, do the owners of Haaretz uh, tell you what to do, what questions to ask me? You think he deals with O'Reilly's program? He has the Wall Street Journal? You think he approves every editorial? I, you know, this is, that's nonsense. No, I don't think so. Okay. He owns a, a media empire. That media empire goes all over the place. Uh, some people like Fox, some people don't like Fox. Some people like the Wall Street Journal, some people like, we didn't. We didn't give it to him for his, although we gave, you know, we recognized his media genius because he is an innovator in, in communication. He understood the media in advance. Uh, in fact, he changed the Wall Street Journal from a sleepy financial paper to a dynamic whatever. But we didn't, you know, that's, that's not the issue. The issue is the man has a position, the man has a voice, and he's taken, he's made his own personal decision to stand up, to stand up to the Jewish people, to stand up for Israel, and that's what we recognize. I think he actually made personal points, but let's, let's, not go, let's go on to other stuff because there's so much stuff I wanted to ask you about. Um, I know that some of the discussions that you've been having this week in Israel have been around um, delegitimization of the state of Israel or its character. And um, I wanted to ask you about an organization, an Israeli organization called Shovrei Mashtika, or in English, Breaking the Silence. Are you familiar with that organization? No. I've heard about it, but I'm not very familiar oh, with it. Oh, okay. So it's, it's difficult for me to ask you to comment if you've never heard of it. Though. I've heard the name. I know what it means, but I'm not familiar with the organization, per se. Well, I'll, I'll just briefly tell you, like, uh, that they are, um, they are basically Israeli soldiers who served in the Israeli army, who served in the occupied territories, the West Bank and or Gaza during um, the previous Gaza war, the most recent Gaza war. And what they came out as saying is that the, um, the houses were needlessly destroyed, phosphorus was fired into populated areas, commanders created an atmosphere that... So what's, the, so what's the question? Well, I, I was wondering, like, what do you think, because I know that... It's Israel a is a democracy. It has institutions. People ask questions. The courts act. And as long as it's a democracy, I'm, it's fine that they're there. And okay, so... There's actually a bill right now in front of the uh, Supreme... Or, sorry, in front of the Knesset, rather, um, by the member of Knesset, Zev Elkin, of the Likud. And basically, it would limit the activities of organizations like Breaking the Sun. Listen, if we were to react to every politician who gets up in the morning and has a weird idea of what he thinks his constituents would love, um, this is a super democracy here. It's a little harder in the United States to initiate a legislation. So, uh, you know, if we were, we, we could, no, it doesn't matter, but we can, we can spend 24 hours here talking about legislation that people introduce. Um, we usually take position on certain on legislation when it reaches after the second reading and the government supports it. And I'm not going to get into, you, you can find every idiotic or non-idiotic concept because it's a game politicians play. So fine, there are, there are people who put in to restrict this, to restrict that, to get their uncle, I, so okay. what? Okay. It's a democracy. So, okay, fair enough. So what I'm hearing from you is like, there's so many things that are happening, it's not possible to respond right. to everything. When so it becomes serious, when it becomes serious in the essence of um, I impacting on Israel's democracy, on Israel's society, um, then chances are you'll hear from us. Uh, so wh why don't I ask you a little bit like about the things that you've actually come out and stated sure. and I can get some feedback around that. Um, so one of the things that I've noticed that, is, that you've written about is that um, if an organization or a person comes out and says, Israel is acting like an apartheid state. Mm -hmm. it, um, your response, or the ADL's response, has been that's out of bounds. That's beyond pale. It's complete. That shows that you're. We don't communicate with you or have a negotiation or discussion with you because you're now beyond negotiation or discussion. So my question is. When you have people like Defense Minister Ehud Barak saying that Israel is an apartheid state if the Palestinians don't have to say, when you have Speaker of the Knesset Ruby Rivlin saying the same thing, 
then how can we castigate people? For well, it's very easy because um, Barack's life uh, and life is devoted to defend the state of Israel, and the people, uh, most of them, who charge Israel with apartheid, their lives are devoted to undermine the state of Israel. And there is a quantitative, qualitative. You you look at the totality of the person of the institution. You make a judgment. Okay, so it's a, it's kind of an arbitrary judgment. It's not an arbitrary judgment. How, that's how not that's a that's an insulting comment with all due respect. It's not arbitrary. So I stand like for an institution. We make judgments. You are making judgments by the questions you so ask. I'm so ask. I'm not saying to you these are arbitrary questions. It's not arbitrary. We make a judgment, okay, okay, and you can judge us by the judgment. We make choices and we make judgment. Okay. So all, what I'm trying to understand for you is what is the basis for that judgment? For the basis here. is our judgment when we feel that this is an unfair characterization. Most of these people will uh, who, who charge Israel with apartheid, I would challenge you to find something that they have said, which they found something positive in Israel, that they value in Israel. Most of these people are out there to defame Israel, to criticize Israel, now to delegitimize Israel. And when they do so, we will take a position. To say that Barack, because he once in a debate, in a discussion issue, said Israel is an apartheid state, to then compare it with that, that's arbitrary. And, and, and that's really Israelis political, but that's okay. Israelis say it. <laughs> That's fine. Listen, we're not a police institution going out. I don't care what you say, except if you say it on the air. If it impacts and people ask, and if you would ask me, I will make a judgment. You either agree with me or don't. Okay. Um, so, one of the things that I noticed is um, in, in, there's like a book that put out by the ADL is talking about like. Um, uh, ADL, Israel Advocacy Guidebook. Mm -hmm. So I, I was going to try to get position papers to understand. Um, so you talk about that the label apartheid can't be applied here because um, it's not a system of legal racial segregation. Right? Um, but how is it not a system of legal segregation? Listen to me. Th this, is, this is really... Um, we believe that people who call this state apartheid are anti-Israel, sometimes anti-Semitic. Okay, I'm not here to discuss with you criteria. You don't think it's an apartheid state? You're entitled. This is, oh, well, I'm, what kind of, I, I'm not here to tell you my innermost much one. We have a record. We've been out there. We have positions. You may not like them. You may not agree with them. But I'm not here to explain to you what are the specific criteria which came down to say, hey, this is, we believe this is not an apartheid state, okay. period. Okay? So uh, are there elements? Are there so. elements in this country that we believe hurt democracy? Can be interpreted as yes, and we speak out about them. Okay, and we will. But anybody who caught this is not a perfect democracy. There are serious issues in this country. There are issues of discrimination. There are issues of there are all kinds of issues in this country. But it does not amount to. Apartheid is South Africa. Apartheid is a government policy to separate, to segregate by the virtue of the, they are the color and here we would say ethnicity. Israel is not an apartheid state. Does it have things that we don't like? Does it engage in, in positions that we don't like? Sure. But in its totality, it is not an apartheid state. Period. Okay. Um. Again, I don't want to ask you about things like um, that you can't, you know, like you said, laws that may or may not come to pass. But just last week, there was, um, I, I noticed on your website, you, there's this, um, a group of people in the United States that believe that um, FEMA has built camps across the United States. Mm -hmm. And they say that one day they will be used to... We criticized it. Yeah, okay. I noticed that. Um, the thing is, that um, just last week in Israel, there was a large-scale military training exercise that involved large segments of the army. Um, and the, the training exercise, as reported by Israel radio, was that it was to simulate a situation where the Israeli government would make a decision to transfer or to change the borders of the state of Israel, which would disenfranchise some of its Arab citizens, and that in the wake of that decision of uh, 
that a lot of Arab Israelis would uh, react and protest it, and then in the wake of these protests, the army would uh, then create prison camps to hold them. Um, and that sounds to me like that exact situation, you know. That's absolute nonsense, okay? This is Israel training its soldiers to situations, anticipating what would happen if there was serious either military issues or, or civil disobedience. And, uh, and for you to compare it with some idiots who are saying that the United States is setting up concentration camps, you know, this is, it's absolute nonsense. Thank God the Israeli government is trying to anticipate. It anticipates the, the gamut of, of, of possible reactions. And, and thank God that it has the, the foresight or some people have the foresight to anticipate the worst of situations to prepare its soldiers and citizen soldiers as to how to react. So what is the problem and how does this compare to some idiot saying that, that FEMA is making concentration camps which is somebody's figment of stupid imagination. Well uh, the only reason I brought it up is to say that this is obviously something you're against. You're, you're no I'm against, against I'm against an idiot who creates uh, rumors um, against whatever to frighten the American people, etc. That's what I'm against. That's not what this is all about. Do you think that this military exercise? I don't know. I'm not an expert. I am not an expert on civil disobedience. I'm not an expert on what maneuvers and exercises the Israeli military engages in, and I don't have the slightest idea. Okay, fair enough. Um, Please, um, I know that one of the things that you've also come out in strong opposition to, in, as well as the, the label apartheid, is the movement to uh, create a, a boycott. And Correct. I understood that either is, would you feel the same way if the boycott is directed at all, or as primary, secondary, tertiary? Boycott? Do you feel it the same way if it's a boycott directed specifically against uh, organizations or groups or institutions of some kind that operate in the West Bank, specifically targeted against them because they operate in the West Bank? I'm opposed to boycotts, period. I think boycotts hurt the wrong people, do not achieve their aims. They are more, uh, they're counterproductive. I am, I'm not aware of any boycott except for the boycott against South Africa that has worked. And even there, it hurt innocent people because it really was more directed at people losing their jobs than the government. So I'm opposed to boycotts. Um, and I certainly point, opposed to boycotts, um, whether against the whole state of Israel or segments of the state of Israel. Yes, yeah, so we are. we basically have a policy of being opposed to boycotts. But I mean, it's not necessarily, if I understand correctly, because it's less tactically effective. It's it's because um, is it moral reasons? That well, the moral reason is boycotts basically hurt the wrong people, and they're innocent victims of the boycott. They do not necessarily impact. There's a question about sanctions, whether sanctions work either. It's the same issue. We do not believe that that one usually one should use boycotts because first of all you start a boycott you don't know how to control you doesn't have a control it's very difficult to stop it and on, on a principled position we are opposed to boycotts okay um, and most people who take boycotts do so selectively usually has a, their point of view which they're entitled to and we have right to say it's wrong it shouldn't be don't use it well, again, it seems to me that what you've said now is, is our tactical reasons. Again, you're saying because it can go out of control, but uh, you know, there's a situation right now where Palestinians, you know, have desires. Obviously, we're saying, I think we can agree that we're saying that um, a military, an armed struggle, is something that we condemn mm -hmm. on that part. Um, what's happening now is that uh, a lot of Palestinians who are actually engaging in non-violent demonstrations, weekly demonstrations, to be in, um, are being around, like Adib Abu Rahma, Abdullah Abu Rahma, like these are people who have just been sentenced to a year or year and a half in jail for things like... You have a justice system, this is a democracy, you have a justice system, you deal with the justice well, system. Well, I am not an expert, justice. I am not an no, expert no, no. on the judicial system, I, I, and, and I don't intend what to I'm be. I am concerned about people who in a bigoted way single out Israel to be critical to undermine it. 
period. You don't like some of my selections, you're entitled. I don't pretend to come here and become your civil liberties union. I don't pretend to make judgments and this is what you want me to do. That, I know, that's fine no, for no, you, no, not no, for me. You are. Well, I am not, I'm no, not. I'm an American organization yeah, whose one, who's one is... Of, a blacklist of 10 groups. That you I didn't say, like excuse me, you use the word blacklist. That's because of your prejudice. I didn't use a blacklist. No, it is called it? information. I didn't ask anybody to do anything. I believe that people should know who people are and what they represent. Okay. You make your judgment. You like them, God bless you. You want to support them, you use blacklist. Okay. That's your political well, term, which term is nonsense. Want. Okay. Term you, want. you know what? You, you have a couple more questions. questions. I'm just throwing, no, I'm but you, you, you've already made a dis judgment that it's a blacklist. Blacklist is boycott. So then you say no, and then I say, okay, what word term Fine. would you like? Oh, okay. And then I listen to you what you're asking Fine. for. Uh, no problem. So what I'm saying is if we're saying that a group, no, we started off with saying armed struggle is not okay, okay? What's happening is that people who are organizing nonviolent demonstrations right, right. are also being arrested right. for do you know how many? Do you know how many conflicts there are in the world? Dude, I want to see those people. I don't have, if you want to boycott Israel because you think that it doesn't meet the standards of justice that you believe in, I have no problem with that. But if at the same time you also don't boycott 20 other places in the world where there is no justice, it doesn't even come close to here, that's not, that's not, as far as I'm concerned, that's not real. If you want to boycott because you want to change a certain system, fine. Then do it in China, do it vis-a-vis -vis Cuba, do it vis-a-vis -vis Saudi Arabia, do it vis-a-vis -vis Iran. Most of the people that we are opposed to, to their boycotts, are those who only select the state of Israel for their standard of justice. And that to me is bigoted and biased. Um, do you think that people what if an Israeli is advocating it? And I think he's wrong. But for Israel, I have an opinion. Israel is the most important thing for someone who lives here. He said, I, I, listen to me. I, I don't advocate doing anything, but I have the right to say I think this is wrong. I think this is counterproductive. Right. I want to see the same Israeli concerned about the rights in Saudi Arabia or in China. If you really, listen, Israelis travel all over the globe. They travel to countries where there is no democracy. They spend their money there. Here they, 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 they boycott here or the West Bank. They don't boycott it in Tibet or in China where they go or in India. Look at the conditions of, of justice there too. So it's, it's a double, to, triple standard, but they're entitled. They're cafe uh, revolutionaries or something. <laughs> that's, a, that's a generalization to say that anyone who engages in political activity is sipping lattes in Goa. I, I I, again, I didn't person. say it. You're putting no, words into I'm, my mouth. I'm, I'm, I'm saying these are the you. same I'm people. Saying you're saying Israelis. I don't have a problem about that. Israel, they're entitled to do what they want. My, I, I'm not here to, to sit and say you can't do what what you call it. But if there's an organization that singles out Israel under the banner of, of social justice, and watch what I have a right to say. Anywhere else else you, you raise that standard, you're entitled to raise that standard about Israel. Absolutely. But if the only country in the world where you see violations of human rights, etc., is Israel, you're a bigot. Just uh, from a personal perspective, my sense is that people who advocate this are constantly saying that we should be engaged, or people that they agree, with, they agree with them politically should disengage from all kinds of capitalism, all kinds of corporations. But they do not, they do not take the same actions vis-a-vis -vis other countries. They selectively pick politically, they're entitled, but I'm also entitled to say this is yeah. double, triple standard, and, and sometimes it's anti-Semitism, not always is it anti-Semitism. Listen, I, we need to wind up. Okay. This can go on for five hours. No, no, you said 20 think, minutes. <laughs> well, actually, we said 40 minutes. But I didn't say 40. Okay, but that, go ahead. That, that's what Phyllis told me. I'm just you know, going through questions. And, and you know, to... I don't think it's productive. I really don't. You're not really interested. You're interested in finding and focus. That's fine. You're entitled. Maybe you're a journalist. I don't think it's productive for anybody. It, it really isn't. Hands, I'm going to ask you hard questions. I, well, I don't know I what a hard question is. That I'm interested in. Fine. Other okay. Okay. So in. let's see if we can wind up. Are interested. Fine. Because if you can't be Fine. Let's see if we can wind up.
you know, all, the reason why I asked you that question is because all the question, all the questions are in the same vein. Okay, well, I represent an organization, stand for an organization, which is 97 years old. I've been involved in public Jewish life for 45 years, and all your questions are in what you're entitled. But I'm saying, okay, I've had enough. Ask me something that's a little different, or let's wind up. It, this is all a political, t trying to ascertain politically. You started with murder. Of all the things that we do, how come, how come you didn't ask me about, I came here this week. I went to see the kids in Ofarim, in, in Rogozin. That's you, you no, it's your stories. agenda too, because that smacks of unfairness in this country. There's other okay. writers and other Israeli writers who are writing okay, so you, so you only care about things that you don't like that I do, not things I'm that... I'm not representing... The, uh, that's the fine, that's fine, and I don't want to waste my time engaging your views. We have did it. You know, okay, move on. I think I'm asking you different Ooh. questions, and I think I... Ask that's these fine. Are You're entitled to ask any question that you want, and after a while I say, hey, this is not really... This is this is to, to take a series of issues which you don't like what we do, which you're entitled Brother, to. It's not about me. It's about the. It's who you represent. It's Fine. It, you you say you represent people. That's right. Yes. And you know, know, I don't really know exactly how like policy decisions. Well, you could have asked me that, but you actually, didn't. There's so many questions here. Well, okay, okay, short. fine. That's super interesting to me. It's fine. super interesting to me, like, how... Um, David, let's, let's proceed. Do you want me to go to the next thing? Okay. Yes. All right. Um, something that you won't say that we've talked about so far, right? Okay. Um, I noticed that on your website there's, like, a section devoted to animal rights, extremism, and environmental activist right. extremism. And... Well, okay. Does it, it's not a section of it, but it's one of the things that we cover, right? Right. Okay. So, what I'm wondering is, seeing as like, also on the website it says that mostly what these people do is freeing animals from their owners and property destruction, and no one's been killed or even injured in an attack. What? Why does? And they're, they're not. What's your question? Hit. They're not. Of course they're bigoted. bigoted. Of course they're bigoted. Who are they bigoted against? Peter? Uh, I w I Peter challenges the Jewish right to slaughter. Peter says that uh, that slaughter of animals is, is equivalent to the Holocaust in concentration camps. We are concerned with trivialization of the Holocaust. They have used imagery of Jews in, in camps with, with penned animals. That is an issue that we're concerned about, period. It's bigoted. It's distorted. Uh, it, it's distorted um, comparisons. It cheapens the history. Now, either they're totally ignorant of the Shoah is about, or if they're not ignorant, they're bigots. Okay. So we have a position. Period. Can I? Well, there's actually two questions. It goes into two different directions. One, groups like the ALF and ELF who don't use necessarily Holocaust imagery or campaigns. Even they're they're about actual direct actions. Um, and and who are they bigoted against? But the more than that, or why they're labeled terrorists, you know. But, but also, I wanted to ask you what your reasoning is for being, I noticed that you're really upset about uh, the using of imagery, Holocaust right. imagery, right. and comparing it to what animals go Yeah, because if you life. don't understand it, you don't learn the lessons. If, um, if, you, if, if, you, if we have a situation in the United States that somebody opens up a restaurant and he becomes a soup Nazi, Right, because he'll decide what soup you're going to eat uh, or buy. Uh, that's a trivialization that, un, that you've learned no, nothing from history. And yeah, we do care, and, and we'll speak out against it. Okay. Okay. But we're not talking about soup Nazi. We're talking about, you mentioned group like PETA, using imagery of people who suffered in the Holocaust and comparing that to how animals are treated in our society. I mean, don't... Isn't it possible that animals in our society are treated from their own perspective? If an animal well, if you know from your, pers your perspective, then you know a lot more I'm than I do. I still don't understand the question. I answered you why we do it. You don't agree well, with it? Fine. Why. No, no, no. I'm, I want to. I told you why we do it. Because, because they are distorting so history. Loud. They're because using Jewish in history. What's in your head. I, I'm not here to tell you what's in my heart. I'm here to tell you what the organization is. And you're not my analyst. And I didn't okay, well, volunteer for to okay. find out what's in my heart. Okay. 
So you want to know what the organization does? I have a responsibility. Ask me why it's made the decision. I told you. Now you want to know what's in my heart. No, 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 that's I, nonsense. I you, what, what I want to understand is why it's patently offensive. It's offensive say. because it is offensive. Because to say that, that slaughtering animals is equivalent to what the Nazis did to the Jews is offensive. It's offensive to me as a Jew. It's offensive to somebody who knows history. It's not offensive to you. God bless you. Okay. I told you why. Move on. Okay. okay. Um, so, I know that after um, there was like this big controversy around the community center in Lower Manhattan, and when afterwards when you spoke about this, you said that um, in the New York Times, survivors of the Holocaust are entitled to feelings that are irrational, and also about families of people who died during 9-11. Their anguish entitles them to positions that otherwise would ca we would categorize as irrational or bigoted. Right. So, how do we decide what? Okay, that listen to me again. You only. <laughs> Very interesting interview. Okay. Uh, no, I, I, I will tell you something. Um, you don't bother to ask me, is this a correct quote? You don't bother, you, you assume, okay? This was part okay, of a discussion question. with a journalist okay. who, when I said to him about the convent and the, what you would call it, he didn't know history from Borscht. He didn't know what I was so talking you know, about. I, personally I, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. But what you're, what you're basically saying is you assume this, as I'm telling you, the conversation he and I had was when he said to me, well, it's been 60 years. Um, can't the Holocaust survivors forgive and forget? Isn't that irrational? And I said to him, you know, and he says, you still hate, you, do, do survivors still hate Germans and Poles? I said, yeah, some of them do. And they're entitled to carry that prejudice and be, they're entitled. Okay? You don't have to either see That's what this is all about. Okay. It was in the context he, as you know, journalist, he picked out, but he fit well, it, it fine. It, it makes sense. I don't it doesn't necessarily, it makes sense in a very specific case. In the case that we were talking about, he couldn't understand while 60 years, he couldn't sense. understand while 60 years later, it, it, isn't it irrational, he said, isn't it prejudice that 60 years later, three generations later, you you're still opposed to nuns praying for you in Auschwitz? And I said, yes, you know what, they're entitled, period. That doesn't apply this as a general, I know, I've been criticized, this is a, a general rule applying, it's a very specific to a specific question, and I still believe it, okay? I still believe, they're entitled, they're not, necess they're not right. I'm a Holocaust survivor, have I, for I have not forgotten, but have I forgiven, yes, I, but, but many have not. My children have not forgiven, okay? They're entitled because they lived the trauma through me. So I gave, you know, this is a specific statement. This is not a philosophy of life, okay? For you, you're looking, oh, see, you know, you're prejudiced and all that. That's nonsense. I never said that. Well, come on, you pick out. This is such an important controversy in the U.S. We took a controversial position. What do you pick out? You pick out that one sentence that all those people who didn't like try to portray me as prejudiced, as bigoted, as close-minded, fine. Okay, I, wonderful. I, that's not my intention. Oh, well, but that's the only thing you picked out. I can, do you know the literature on this decision? But Interesting what you picked else. out. I'm only okay. asking the things I don't know. Fine, okay, fine. Go ahead. Um, but that's, that's great. Like, what I, what I want to know is how, and I, this was really my first question, right. maybe after all this you can, you can tell me now, how are decisions reached? Like, how... It, with all due respect, it's really not your business. We have a board, we make decisions. I don't owe you to tell you how we make it. Well, you I want to know on this specific... The I, fine, then, you, then you'll find out how we make decisions, okay? Now, you, you're not auditioning me to be a member of my board. Um, on this specific issue, people ask, okay? They want to know, was Abe Foxman made the decision or was it made by a board? Yeah, we have a board. No, but it doesn't matter, but that's what this comes from. We have a board, they sit, they decide on policy, they decide whether we should or we shouldn't, that, and that's the way the process was. And there was a consensus that this is the position we should take, period. And our accountability is when we say it, people either like it or don't like it, or critical or supportive, period. So that's, that's pretty tough because that's like your feedback. Life is tough. 
Life is tough. Making decisions is tough. Okay? And could I ask also, like, in the same vein of how the decision making process is, is um, how, how does the funding come for the ADL? Like the funding comes from people who voluntarily give money. Period. If you like what you do, we do, you'll support us. You don't like what we do, you won't support us. Well, we don't take governmental money, okay, because we don't want to be holding to policy or not be able to, to criticize. Uh, our money comes 50% from the Jewish community, 50% from the non-Jewish community. Um, we fight not only for Jews, we fight for equal rights for all. Interesting, not one question did you ask me about all, 80, 90% of what we do is education, which reaches out, not Jews, but, but broad. Not one question in all your delving. How do you make a decision to stand up for, you know what, we created, sure, we were opposed to, to this mosque. We, we set up a committee to defend mosques. Why don't you ask me, how did you make that decision? You're not interested in that. Well, so, I read all about it. Oh, okay, you know all the answers. So the, it, so you, you selectively, so you selectively picked out that which you want to probe, which you're entitled. But I, if you if you wanted to tell me more things about what you've been, we could say, listen, I won't give you 40 minutes. I'll give you how much time do you want to <coughs> towards what purpose? Towards what purpose? Are you really trying to uh, are you trying to educate your your audience as to the, what is this entity? Or are you selectively picking things and saying, oh, this is, you know, I don't like this. How does this make sense? If you do this, why don't you do this? That's, you know what? That's you, you nonsense. How is that? Uh, no, because all it is is to find Your a way. Your has a lot of power. You, uh, you do, I don't know what power means. Let me ask you, how do you define power? What does that mean? You just made a judgment. What does that mean? I thought what does it mean we have a lot of power? Uh, well, my sense if you ask me what I think power means, I think power is the ability to have your decision affect the behavior of other people. Then we would be out of business. We fight bigotry, prejudice, racism, anti-Semitism. We've been fighting it for a hundred years. If we had power, would be, there'd be no, none of it. What kind of, that's nonsense. We have power. Maybe we have credibility. And maybe you don't like the credibility that we have because you don't agree with most of the things that we do because they don't fit your worldview, which you're entitled to. We don't have power. We, so, we, the only weapon that I believe I have is credibility. That's all. Okay, it's my word, what I say. And what's that? I'm not going to worry every single day whether I can satisfy 100% of the people. I can't. I make judgments. I try to make honest judgments. Moral judgments, ethical judgments. There, yes, and, and, and I do it in the context of an organization which exists for 100 years, which has mission. And this mission has been set out 97 years ago as a dual mission to, to fight for the, against the defamation of the Jewish people, which is an archaic way in 1913 to say fighting anti-Semitism, because they weren't that comfortable with that word. And the, and the second mission is fight for equal rights and opportunities for all. Okay? That's a very, very lofty mission. It's, 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 and it hasn't changed in 97 years. Um, now, and so we make decisions every day how what we say, what we don't say will impact on bringing those, those missions closer to reality. So we make judgments. We're not the ACLU. They have a different function. Um, we're, we're, we're not right or left, although people characterize us as left. Uh, I come to this country and the people from the right tell me I'm left and the people from the left tell me I'm right and I know I'm doing the right thing. But a lot of people don't like what we do because they come with their own baggage. They're entitled. You come with your own baggage. Harvest comes with their own baggage. Ismail Hayom comes with their own baggage. Fine. And you're entitled to take a look at and say, I don't like what they do. Fine, so you won't support us. But I wish we had power. If we had power, we would do away with prejudice. Okay? We don't. The reason why I'm talking to you, and I realize you, you keep saying, I'm not here to audition you, because I actually believe that all people are equal to one another. Right. That's what I'm fighting for, equal rights. Right. And so I see this as an opportunity, as a journalist, to find out, um, to have a conversation with you about the positions that you take. And no, but you take them selectively based on your on perception what I, of what is right. Which course. Okay, wonderful. And I'm saying and that's... I'm that's that that's you know when you and I when I, if you and I go out and to dinner what I say, if you and I go out to dinner hmm, let me think about what you said right. that 
Well, am I, I learning something from it, uh, or am I, no, or am I no, trying yeah. to like shut it down? I'm. Not, I want to. Well, have you know what? If you, you and I went out to dinner, point. if you I and I, I no, if you and I went out for dinner, and you wanted to. It would be one thing, but that, we're not going out to dinner. You're doing a TV show or an internet show, um, and, and, you're, and you're continuing on one single thread. What are, all these things that you do, how consistent is it? Why do you make this decision and not that decision? Fine, okay. It, it would be a totally different conversation if you and I had, again, over dinner, rather than this. <laughs> So you have an agenda, I, I have an agenda, okay? And some things our agendas agree and others don't. You're trying to find out those things that you don't like what we do. You haven't, you haven't, you haven't elucidated anything that you like. You have taken every single issue that you don't like what we do. So I'm saying it's not a productive interview at this point. Because all you're trying to do is single out things that you don't like or you don't agree. To either embarrass me or to impact, and I'm saying it's not productive. So you're saying I should spend more time asking you no, I think it should be balanced. I think it should be balanced. And all you have done is ask me questions about things that you don't like, judgments that you don't like. And I say, you know what? I have better things to do with my time. I respect you. Let me give you a few compliments. No, things no, I don't want you. I don't want you to give me compliments because if they're out of context, I'm saying you prepared, you worked hard. Yeah. But all you did like was, you, but all you questions. did was single out all the things that you disagree with, and I'm saying, okay, it's not, it's been productive. I thought you would say thank you. I thought you'd say, David, wow. You, no, you David, no, David, no, David, I, I, David, I, David, no, David, 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 I'm a big boy. David, I'm a big boy. This is not tabula rasa. You're not coming here. Hey, A. Foxman, I'm going to sit and talk to him. I'm going to ask about a gamma. No, you're not. You, you, you have an agenda. But if you've talked about all these things before, then why are you getting upset over I'm not getting upset. I don't want to waste my time feeding a, an agenda. But a lot of Jewish people in Israel have the same I don't question. owe them. I really don't owe everybody in Israel. People like what I do. People don't like what I do. People like what this government does. People don't like what this government does. That's what democracy is all about. Right. So I don't owe you a point by Which point. organization isn't a democracy. It's an organization like every other. Correct. As part of democracy. These are people who volunteer their time and their money and their judgment. And respect them, even if you don't always agree. And it's not really your business how these people who make their decision that they're going to join Hadassah rather than JNF. Okay? You may not like Karen Kayemet because you can, you, you know, I can tell you why you wouldn't like Karen Kayemet. But so what? They're entitled. So, so where does this get us? Uh, it's an ability to become clear to everyone, so that everyone knows everything and not just the things. Uh, not everybody can know everything. In the morning, That's we, impossible. We hair, David, teeth, it's everybody cannot nice know everyone. David, just to see the David, face. that's nonsense. Yeah. Everything everyone cannot conflict. know everything. Everyone is a mixed bag. Of, fine, you know, fine. And we can't always just show that we're perfect. I didn't ask you to show perfect. I don't, I don't. You, all you've done is look for contradictions. I'm not asking you to give me a perfect score. But, but you didn't give me to be, you give you press. You haven't taken. Happy to but listen to me, so you haven't out. taken one positive example and said to me, how did you make that decision? Why did you do why did you do this thing rather than this? All you've done is things that you don't like. And I'm saying enough. Okay. okay. You just told me about ninety seven years of credibility. No. So ninety seven no. years of Nine. working to the point where we have credibility. No, that no, you no, you're not listening to me. Okay. Uh, no, I said the only weapon that I have is credibility. That's what I worry about. When you say we're powerful, I said all I have is the ability of trying to be credible. Not everybody thinks we're credible. So I do worry what I say. I do worry how and when I make decisions. I don't intend to be always right. Don't intend to be perfect, period. My, 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 sense, my sense is, and this is just on a personal level, that like I was hoping, right, that I would learn, right, from you, like your position on on um, why the um, boycotts against Israel or against territories. No, be but interesting. and then David, that's not what you're doing. You're you're setting up. You have your criteria. You're not asking me. Tell me, why do you why are you oppose the boycotts? You gave me examples, okay, which you don't like and you like. You, you, come on, David, be honest with yourself. You're not. You didn't come here and say you you have a position. 
position on boycotts. Can you explain to me how you arrive, when you pick, no, you gave me examples of situations and basically said to me, hey, you didn't take a position on this. Why didn't you take a position on this? So I just talked about these are the issues. Right. I want to know how you got to them. And then you said, it's not for us to tell you why we get to certain positions or not to get to certain positions. Right. It's not really your business. I'm I'm not here to say to the world, come and join us and support us. If I were, then you have a right, you know. But, but you, do, you don't want people to, like, if I'm not understanding. People are going to make people decisions. Are people are going to make decisions you, based on the. You have to give in some logic. People, people are, there I'm are. Convinced, you know? I, they, you David, I'm not out there to convince the world. I really am not. If people judge us by decisions that we make. They either agree with them or don't. But Supreme None of us are 100% correct. To come to their there are people. You know, that's, you know, somebody sends you a check or becomes a member. It doesn't work, you know, you, you, it's, it's nonsense. And it really is. People either have an image or perception. They, some of them come in because they want to change it, they want to redirect it, which is fine. But it's not your business how we do this. It really isn't. I was, it's a actually, private organization. On the conversation on the way over here, I yeah. was actually saying to um, my colleagues here that I was looking forward to the interview because I saw it as a win-win. I saw if you um, are, like, let's say, antagonistic to some of these positions, then in my mind, like, at least you've come out and said these we are antagonistic to these issues, right? But if, on the other hand... David, you, you said... It, no, David, like, no, that's not what you're doing, David. You said to me, you don't like this cup. Why don't you also dislike this cup? You support this camera. But what about this camera? That, you know, that's what you're doing. That's the only thing you're doing. And you're selecting which cup of coffee and which camera. You're selecting all the examples. Well, for you to compare our condemnation of the FEMA with the military exercises is so political skewed that it's not real it's not honest that's nonsense you only showed your bigotry either you don't understand what we said about the FEMA issue or you're trying to set me up and I'm not interested I'm not so David I, I, I spent time I spent I more time than I intended I, I don't think this is a list I don't think you came here to really find out I think you came here to set up situations but you're entitled you're entitled. I, think I just what, all I did was go through two no. things. You prepared. No, 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 you're FEMA me right. and this is such ludicrous nonsense. But you wanted Last to make a point. No. Exercise. You wanted to make Where a point that this military exercise was yeah. bad or will be bad. And why doesn't the Anti Defamation League stand up and say, How dare you even think of having well, to do terrible things? On the loyalty oath. You took a position on the loyalty oath. So you do take positions on things that happen in the state of Israel. These so the, the loyalty oath is equivalent to some exercise that you really don't know about, but somebody may have told you. It's, it's not a... But you come on! David, Thank you. we'll come back and meet again. Really? Yeah. Do you want to talk to me again? Absolutely. But I first want to, I want, first I want to, I want to sit and talk to you at dinner. Okay. Okay? I want to get to know you. Sure. And then if you want to play this game for the audience, fine. Okay. Fair enough. Deal. I don't. I listen. I, I know where you. I, I respect where you're coming from. I, I just don't think. I, 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 honest is the wrong word. I don't think it was really. Well, I guess it was an honest uh, effort to really find out what we do. It was a way to to embarrass, to put in contradiction. That's what it was. And I'm sorry about that, because I really think you came with Deod Dumont, and this was an opportunity for you to put me on this, to, not to embarrass me but what and, and that I'm sorry about because uh, we were deciding to do it or not okay yeah. and I uh, are as you are you aren't and at the end of the day I said you know what somebody cares enough fine I, I, but I'm saying you I'm sorry I'm not sorry I met you I, I, and I'm saying to you I would like to continue conversations but I was I was set up this was not a true effort to really find out what we do. The questions in advance. I, I, I told you, like you I didn't look at them. I, I really didn't look at it. I made a judgment. You know, somebody who tries, you, you. And I, and I said, okay. I made mistakes before. I participated in a movie in Israel, all right. So, and I made a horrendous mistake. I trusted him. Okay, he did a hatchet job. It's called defamation. I took him into my 
into my heart. He screwed me. <clears throat> and a lot of people said, don't trust media. I, I'm, I, you know, and, and, and in a way, in a nice way, you basically did the same thing. So do I, do I have a person? No, I, I would like to continue. Because what you think is important to me, okay? Because you, you just as we tried to impact on people's minds and hearts, you do. Okay, and so yeah, I will. I would like to continue, but, but not this way. Not this way. This was a setup, David. This was a way to embarrass what we do. To say, see, there's no consistency. So how in your heart do you decide, Peter? Who gives a shit about Peter? Give me a break. In the world that we're in, Peter is Gornish. So you dug up Peter? That's nonsense. Because it's your political agenda. But do you know why? Because it's the very heart. This whole world is being destroyed. In in my humble opinion, because people believe that humans are different than other animals. And because of Fine. that, we are then, then, then let's have that discussion. We didn't have that discussion. And you didn't why. ask that question, which is a very philosophical you question. You asked me about my position on PETA. Okay. I, you, actually, I never brought up the name PETA. You well, that's what you're using the example of the ADL. Took a position on this organization. Activism and environmental activism. Yeah, because also they don't act um, civilly. Okay. That's another way you, you can have your point of view. They're beyond that. They, they're engaged in, in civil terrorism. Okay. They, they, so that's another issue. How do you get your message across? Another time. I'll take To be continued. I really. <laughs> we're, I off, we're off camera. You must have my, enjoyed. I have to take my way to the doctor. Okay. Very, okay. Very well, I hope she feels better. Me too. Uh, but you know what? Uh, the result of this is mm -hmm. to not to trust. Uh, not, I should have not done the interview. And, and most people said to me, don't do it. Okay? It's yeah. Harrod, you don't know who he is. You know how Harrod you know, feels about, you know. Uh, Ansel Pfeffer wrote a piece. Mm -hmm. I read it. Okay, you know. Um, they haven't covered one thing that I have done positive. Natasha is this constantly story. writing about okay. you. Well, not constantly. It took a while, but that's not. But, but I still said, you know what? Hey, and I'm sorry, I'm disappointed, okay? Mm -hmm. Because you came here with an agenda. You didn't come really to elucidate. And I said, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not I'm, sorry I'm for sorry the time. I'm sorry that my I, questions angered you. They didn't anger I felt that, me. You they know what I felt? You're professional. David, it's your, it's your day job. So you think all the time David, about these questions. David, you think all the time about the answers. David, I figured you'd be like, here, I'm, one, two, three. Like you're no, throwing David, cards at me. Because you hear them all the time. If you don't hear them, maybe you're in group think. Maybe David. you're only with people who think the same way you do David. that you wouldn't even think of these I'm questions. Sorry. You disappointed me because you came with an agenda. You didn't come to a list of eight. You didn't, and I'm sorry, that's all. Fox News doesn't do that? I don't go on Fox News if I can help it. So see, here's another judgment, okay? I don't go on Fox News until there is a, you know, I never went to them to sell my book. I could sell my book on Fox like this. So you already made a judgment, okay? Oh, I mean, you said if I'm biased, then Fox isn't. That's all I'm saying. Thank you. Thank you.